Hello and thanks for joining us on another one of our Can You Hear Me Now? series of No Fluff Tech Tips. This is Richard Jobs and Terraquant. Today we are going to take a closer look at MOS scoring, MOS, that score that your voice monitoring tool gives you. Poor voice quality, especially intermittent bad voice quality, is the most frequent problem happening in your IP telephony network today. The MOS or mean opinion score is a leading indicator of voice quality, but what does it tell you about your network? What's causing the poor user experience? What are the root causes in your network of such bad call quality? Terraquant No Fluff Tech Tips make best use of your time. Your time is valuable. So we come straight to the point, showing you how you can quickly solve service impacting telecom and network problems with practical tips. So let's get started. Today we are going to talk about the underlying root causes of poor voice quality and how you can isolate them very quickly. We call it speech quality because it's not your voice that leaves your mouth, it's the speech sounds from your voice. Hopefully you'll also find our attempts at humour entertaining. Anyway, let's start with having a look at what is MOS. After that we will talk a little bit about how users may describe their voice quality experience to you on the help desk and we're going to play you some audio clips to give you some examples. Then we're going to look at the difference between MOS as measured with a packet monitoring tool versus MOS as measured with a test tool that uses audio or tests from analog interfaces in other words, true end-to-end -end user experience. Then we're going to play you some more audio files containing defects caused by analog impairments and other phenomena on the network, which are not caused solely by packet loss or jitter. And then we'll finish off with a summary. Let's have a quick look at this MOS scale. MOS is typically a subjective scale derived from human beings listening to tapes and voice clips containing impairments and rating them on a scale from 1 to 5, 1 being extremely bad, the worst, and 5 being perfect. Typically, we don't rate anything as being perfect, so in a real scenario, 4.5 or 4.4 is about the maximum you will ever see measured. In live networks we need to automate this and this is where technologies such as the E-Model and R-Factor and PESC and Polka come in to allow a computer to analyze the quality of the speech. Let's play for you some audio containing severe packet loss so that you are familiar with what it sounds like. You'll hear two sentences, the first is excellent quality and the second one is experiencing really bad packet loss you'll hear the familiar choppy audio. What is sometimes called the picket fence effect, which you may be familiar with when packet loss is the root cause of the poor voice quality. Remember, packet loss sounds like picket fence, doesn't it? The audio above shows the transmitted pure audio source in the middle graph. You can see the first sentence followed by the second sentence which is impaired by the packet loss and congested network. The third graph shows you the erroneous energy, lost or generated energy that has been caused by the packet loss. So let's listen to the audio clip of packet loss. These days, a chicken leg is a rare dish. The hog prefers chopped corn and garbage. Here is a diagram of how packet monitoring probes are installed to isolate where in your network physically packet loss or jitter is creeping in and causing the bad voice quality. Take for example this call flow here from Alice to Bob left to right. We span or port mirror the packets northbound or for high density high capacity networks we would recommend installing a dedicated tap. If your infrastructure is installed in a public cloud, such as Microsoft Azure, AWS or Google Cloud or other, Terraquant Prism can give you visibility there as well. Important thing is that you must capture all the packets to get an accurate MOS metric. 
With permanently de deployed passive probes monitoring all significant voice segments or legs of the call, we can instantly troubleshoot which segment of the call is suffering from the packet loss or jitter. It is usually satisfactory, giving us sufficient granularity with our monitoring tool to monitor the legs between, say for example, the endpoint ALICE to the SBC, the access SBC, or directly to the PBX, and then the leg to the peering SBC, and then the leg on the public side of the SBC out to the SIP trunk or carrier. In other words, let's probe the major voice network elements. All network or packet monitoring tools use a mechanism known as R-factor to determine the MOS value or voice quality. As mentioned, network monitoring tools capture only packets, IP packets. So we need a mechanism that will estimate speech quality by monitoring packets only. This is our factor derived from the E-model. Packet loss and jitter is the common cause of poor voice quality in operational networks, being caused by outages and congestion in the network infrastructure. Our factor based MOS also uh, is a measurement that scales to hundreds of thousands of RTP streams, so it's a valid tool for monitoring operational networks. It's important to remember though that packet monitoring tools monitor packets. They can monitor packet loss, packet jitter, and packet delay with the assistance of RTCP. Packet monitoring tools do not me measure phenomena such as echo or audio delay or other impairments such as those caused by a soft phone running on a PC that's stressed for CPU or running over your headset cable with your chair. We've all done that. Measurements of echo and audio delay or analoging artifacts can only be measured by testing with audio files and making PESC or Polka measurements. It's helpful to be mindful of other types of audio impairments that frequently occur in your network in addition to packet loss and jitter such as codec overload in the endpoint, or loss of codec synchronization, transcoder errors, endpoint failure, or as I've mentioned, CPU congestion, and echo. Here's a quick example of audio coming from a soft phone where the codec is starved of PC use computing power. So now we're going to play you an example of a G729 file from one end and the other end is a variant of G729, G729B. These two are not interoperable and so this is the net effect you'll get as heard in the audio. The juice of lemons makes fine pun. <laughs> In order to find all audio impairments in end-to-end -end speech quality, such as the ones we've been hearing, we need to do active testing, generating real audio and transmitting that uh, as the SIP calls across the network. This will detect all types of audio imperfections including packet loss and jitter, but also analog type artifacts. Audio monitoring tools also measure audio quality right to your headset, to your IP phone, to your mobile, through your soft phone, or and ultimately to your mouth and ear, and also through the transcoders in the network that do DSP type work. Be aware, there's a lot of active test tools out there that just use synthetic bit patterns in their RTP, and it's used to measure quality of service, but not real MOS and not real audio. These will give you misleading answers because they're not recognized by any voice processing network elements like IP phones in your network or the transcoders, which you never know uh, may appear in the path of your voice call. So talk to TerraQuant on how to make accurate speech quality measurements including audio delay and echo and all manner of audio artifacts that we humans find annoying. To summarize, 
Amongst Ruth's root causes of bad voice quality, pattern loss and jitter are the most common and can be determined by R-factor MOS, by packet monitors. Delay and echo are not measured by either kind of MOS. MOS measures speech clarity. Measurement of echo and delay need to be done separately. Other causes of poor voice quality beyond packet loss and jitter include codec overload, loss of synchronization of the codec, transcoder error, or endpoint failures, for example, CPU congestion in the PC. If you don't have access to audio monitoring tools that can make PESC and Polka measurements, then you'll have to capture the audio and take the time to listen to it. This can be quite time consuming. So if you're interested in a service to measure true audio quality using PESC and Polka, please let us know and we can help you out with a managed service. In the next video of our Can You Hear Me Now series, we will demonstrate how to troubleshoot failed registrations and expired registrations of SIP endpoints. If you have any feedback or comments on these tech tips, we would be delighted to hear from you. Please message me on LinkedIn. See you on the next Can You Hear Me Now? No Fluff Tech Tips. Thanks for watching and bye bye.